Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. In this video, I'm going to continue with the Elfnor 3 generator um, script node in Spreadshop. And this is going to be like a more advanced kind of topic. And I will also cover a little bit about list masking. So it's actually one of the options inside the tree generator that I haven't talked about. So let's switch to Spreadshop really, really quick and turn on Spreadshop. Create a new node tree and you know the drill. We just open the text editor and load the script by Elfnor. So where is it? Spreadshop. Spreadshop space tree Elfnor. Okay, let's get this. And that's the script. We can just hide it now. And let's create a script node. Grab the script and reload load it. Okay. We're gonna do something that's just really simple. We, let's just use like a random random vector. And let's see. Yeah, just use random vector. I guess this should work. Let's make like 50. This is gonna be the end vertices, and the start vertices is gonna be just like at 0, 0, 0. Vector in, plug into the start vertices, and now we should be getting result file save as three generator advance SV. Okay, save, save new file. Okay, um, let's use view draw and take a look at the result. So we have our tree-like structure. That's because of this guy is like a this one spitting out like random points around it, and this guy is at zero zero zero, and it's it's uh it's drawing this tree-like structure. So that's a uh, really simple and easy to understand. Um, you might want to make this tree a little bit bigger. So how do we do that? Um, yeah, we can use vector math, and here we can use the scalar multiply scalar. Plug the original random vector, and then use float. Plug that in. If you want something that's more random, this can also be randomized. And maybe we should try that. So this, whoops. If the value is too big, um, our tree generator cannot find the way to get there. So this is like maximum two. If we have like three here, the point disappears. So we need to increase this, maybe turn it to five. <coughs> So that's uh, easy enough to understand. Um, here we can hide the points, just see the lines. If you want to be more clear, I'm gonna create another field draw. And I will draw the random points. So that's the random points and then the tree uh, will start from that point. Uh, wait a minute. Sorry. Gonna I'm gonna draw the start vertices. So that's start vertices and give it a red color. Vertex size of one. So that's the beginning. That's the start points and then the end points is the random random points like from this guy. Random vector. We can have less and we can randomize the seed. Let's hide the grid really quick. Yeah, so yeah, that's a um, really simple, right? But 
and you can actually animate this guy uh, by animating this number let's start, start from one and then slowly it's growing you see how it's actually a little bit like um, an ant searching for food this is uh, how the algorithm is working so you can animate this slowly until until the ants find the points it's get attracted to the food and then once it reaches the destinations it will generate this uh, like a tree kind of structure so that's a that's a tree generator that we all, we already know um, but we haven't touched this um, end mask what is this end mask uh, you might wonder how do we use this end mask so and uh, end mask uh, output is gonna be like a boolean list of booleans if you check it if uh, I'll show you to you viewer tags so end mask I plug into the green to the green that's a single value data let's view it and let's open up uh, text editor let's fetch up viewer so we got this, this list of false and true this is actually um, a, a quick and easy way to kind of masking all the vertices that we have on the on the tree like um, if I turn on so this is all the points that we have right but there are like a uh, there are a few points that's actually the end the end of the branch um, probably some somewhere near near the points the attractor points um, that's random the list mask uh, we can use to grow another branch of the tree so and in order to do that we need to use the list mask um, list mask out so list mask node and then here all we need to do is plug in the vertices into the data and the ends mask into the mask and now let's see the result of this let's plug in the data through into the vertices and then increase this let's have a look Um, am I getting anything? <clears throat> data is true, data is false. Let's check the data index true. Plug in the data there. Control. So we have some points. Ah, I forgot to turn that on, so <laughs> Okay, that's the, the points, that's the end points of the branch, basically. And from that points, those bunch of points, how many do we have? Um, let's find out. This length. This is a debugger. Uh, stethoscope. Let's find out the data. How many do we have? Um, 35. So 35 points. Okay, so we get that points. We can grow more trees based on that. Let's try that real quick. I'm just going to duplicate this tree generator node. And here, data true goes into the start vertices, and the end vertices can be another random values. Um, let's see, where's our random values? I have a feeling that we probably want to have something that's more random so instead of using that value from the beginning I'll, 
I'll create another random vector here. Just like 40 and then view node. Plug that in and check this guy out. So there's a bunch of random number, but it's kind of outside on the surface. We want something that's more random but occupying the whole space. So how do we do that? Let's use vector math. And then here we can multiply scalar. And for the scalar, we want to have a um, random number. Number. Whoops, random. random. And might need to adjust the range. So that's definitely slightly more random. Zero one. Between two and ten. Seven. And the number of random, we can use integer. Let's give it a bigger number. 200. Oh, 150. Let's see. Plug that in, plug that in. So that's slightly more random. And for our tree, that will be much better looking. We can have more or less. This is more like a scatter in a kind of sphere, spherical space. Okay, so let's use these points as our end vertices. Just plug that in. And wait a few seconds and we have a result so let's have a look age hide the points there you go said so that's the second generations of the tree I can give a different color for that branches maybe the First generations can be red. Second generation is blue. And there you go, we got it perfectly what we need. So we can hide a couple of things. You don't need to see this. So that's the, the start points, and then it, it kind of grows out and then it's generating more we can by this uh, stage we can increase the number of points maybe 60 to start with and then for the outer we can increase it to 250 so we have something that's a little bit more complex It's uh, also we can turn on skin modifier if we want. Skin modifier. While it as skin modifier can be a little bit slow to calculate. Um, actually, before we do that, maybe I want. I think I can randomize this. Uh, original points because I kind of like the look of it right there so I'm gonna randomize it just reusing those nodes set up so random and then we have this map range and then we have the integer we have this guy plug into that guy Min and max, um, let's control it between 0.1 and 3. Uh, 
16. So that's definitely more complex. And we can have more higher number like 500 or even 1000 or branch maximum radius. Okay, let's increase this. between 3 and 7 on this guy maybe I can have more number there 800 see it doesn't make much difference actually sometimes smaller number just give you enough so we have that uh, maximum branch is maybe 200. It doesn't make much different either. So branch length to okay. That's kind of looking. All right, so let's uh, create our tree. Let's plug in the vertices and the edges and the radius. Yep. And turn on life modifier, and we should get our tree. Wait a few seconds. Okay, we are done. Now we're getting that kind of pattern. Very interesting looking. And we can also generate the other guy, the branches. <laughs> yeah, there's a the only thing with skin measure that. Um, it will take a few seconds to process every time we re regenerate that node there's like a calculations okay let's call this alpha 2 for to see I have a feeling that it's also calculating the first node. And the branch radius. I think the skin measure is not it's not like a perfect node, but this is kind of a quick way to get a result. Okay, so there you go. That's our result. Let's hide everything except for the result. And we have something like that. Um, let's look at it in full screen. Matcap. Quite complex design. Uh, and it's easy, so easy to create. <clears throat> I, oft I often use the matte cap like this. It's kind of a quick way to give a uh, that look, you know. Like it's like a render, but not. You don't need to render it out, and it's already looking quite nice. Um, yeah. So as a bonus, I will do a little bit tutorial on the list masking 
So I'm gonna save this and start fresh. This is uh, gonna be like an extra tutorial for Sverchok. Um, list masking is uh, very very useful. It's kind of like um, a way to hide some of the data and randomize things really 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 quick. So let's you let's say you have a plane and you know that the plane will generate a grid. So it's looking like that. You can increase the grid six by six and we have 25 faces so it's six by six points and let's say you want to hide some of this um, face you know like kind of um, deleting them so I'll bake it real quick and then hide this let's say you want to delete some of these faces randomly you can use list masking for that um, I will show you really quick. So list mask, list mask, list mask. We use it just um, a while ago for the tree generator, but we're gonna use it. Uh, we can use it for other purpose. So let's say we want to hide some of the faces randomly. So how are we going to do that? We can use random, of course, and all we need to do is providing like a true and false list like a boolean list plug into the mask and if it's true the face will be showing and if it's false the face will be hidden the data of course just gonna be the polygon it's that easy so you need to provide some data here that's a true or false um, let's uh, just create a random so random number, this is a random number, uh, we don't know how many we need, but we probably need the same number of the vertices, or the same number of the polygon. Let's list, use list length and get the number total number of polygons, plug in there, and plug this into the count, and now we have random numbers that is the same as the number of polygons face for this mesh. Text viewer. Let's check it out. Um, check out our random number. Text editor. viewer. Okay, that's our random number. It's a random number between zero and one, and the list of number is twenty-five. Twenty-five is the same number as our. Um, grid points here okay random numbers is not what we need what we really want is the like a list of booleans list of true and false like list of 0 and 1 so how do we do that we can use math and floor floor the number if we floor the number we're gonna get or actually not floor, let's try round there's a round and round n wonder what's the difference, let's try round seems to be working fine, round n not, no round n, it's rounding two different values I think so round is what we need, so now we have list of 1 and 0 true and false and with that list ready, we can just plug into the mask. And hopefully, if we plug this in and level list should be 2 and we have our result. It's a random number that's acting as a list mask for our um, grid right here. We can hide the points. If we bake it, actually Sverchok will be smart enough and get rid of the uh, leftover points. So we only get that kind of result. 
exactly what we need. Um, and yeah, of course, this still kind of procedural. You can increase the number of points or reduce it, and then you can randomize more or less. You can actually, with some math, you can control whether you want to have more true or more false. Yeah, and you can bake this, and again, you get something new. This is also a quick way to generate, like, kind of maze. Um, if you have, um, if you use wireframe, maybe. Maybe not my wireframe, something else. But if we reduce this to 5, this can be also like a kind of like random generator for text. I think I've done that already. But if we mirror this, um, kind of grid pattern, we can get something that's really interesting. It's kind of a uh, like a glyph kind of thing. I've done glyph, I think. If you want to bake it out, you can, and you can also do a lot of other things. Because this is very chalk, you can maybe kind of extrude, extrude separate face. So vertices and polygon and here we have another option there's another mask when we have hide let's see what this guy does vertices and polygon so it's kind of like extruding that's nice I didn't know about this node we can randomize the height Um, let's randomize the height. Let's see. A random number. Uh, how many counts should be from uh, this length from this guy? Plug into this guy. Random goes into the height. So we have random number and we can also use the map range and further control the height. Yeah, interesting. Yes, Virtual has a lot of really really useful nodes. Sometimes it surprised me as well. Let's see. Get twenty. So that's the list masking, and then we have this polygon extrude separate face. If I bake it out, I wonder how what I will get. So this guy, they are all kind of separate, but still can be useful. So yeah, so that's a quick look at list masking. Definitely you have another mask here which is interesting so you can further mask the face probably. And there's the scale and height. Yeah, anyway, so that's a quick look at the uh, Another quick look at the tree generator, a little bit more advanced, where you can branch the branch. You can also generate more branch, like a four, three or four levels. And I also have uh, show you a way you can use list mask in Svirchop. And hopefully that's useful. You can um, leave a comment and ask me questions. And yeah, please stay tuned and see you on the next video. Thanks again for.